Welcome back everybody, Chu here, bringing you a, another review on The Mandalorian. This episode was honestly pretty darn good. This was actually about 10 more minutes than the last episode. I actually really liked that this episode had as much information going on. Uh, we get to continue to see the state of the New Republic, seeing how they're standing. We got to see some interesting cameo at the very beginning of this episode. Bo-Katan being assigned a new mission basically and this is interesting an interesting direction this could actually open up bo -Katan to have her own series now i'm personally not against the idea i don't know how many people will feel about it but personally like i said i uh, I'm, i welcome it i truly welcome it but before i continue guys make sure to like comment and subscribe to the channel it would mean the world to me if you guys would help out grow this little community that we're trying to get but let's get into it so we start this episode off seeing navarro once again we see that the pirates have returned this time with the full force we actually have the pirate king basically attacking all of navarro they're having to flee and we have grief carga sending out a message to the new republic officer that we had seen previously he receives the message and he can't really act on his own and we get to see him in this kind of like i guess training grounds or resting area a pit stop whatever you want to call it for new republic officers and among them we see zeb that's right guys zeb from the star wars rebel show that we all loved if you guys watched it if you guys haven't you're missing out zeb is a fantastic character i've had the pleasure personally to meet the voice actor steve bloom i'm glad they brought him back to voice him that was something that i was so happy with i wasn't expecting seeing zeb in there and the way they did him fantastic job but we see that we have this officer uh captain T tiva going over to coruscant and trying to get his request answered and he actually basically gets denied it uh we see a ayla ayla kane or ana kane whatever her name is actually be intervening in how he notices her badge how she was once imperial and now she's with the new republic and serving them obviously but this is crazy because she she's playing a role that i'm thinking is going to be much bigger than what we probably anticipated she may even be an agent of moff gideon who knows if she's truly loyal to the new republic the first order who knows like this is something that just doesn't sit right with us and we'll get to moff gideon later on in fact we have Captain Tiva bringing up the fact that Moff Gideon never arrived at trial. So that means something happened. But we have him going directly to R5, which is now uh, Din's R unit. And we have him revealing the location of the Mandalorians. And we see that he asked the help of Din as it's his friend. And he feels like he wouldn't leave him behind. He then actually gives him the message. He sees the message. Uh, and we have Din actually going and talking in front of the entire, entire covert and actually saying how that they, you know, should help him out. This guy has offered us a place to stay, essentially, is offering us. Uh, he offered me all these things and I'll give it to you guys. And he's been a friend, he's helped me out. And Paz Vizla also joins in on the talking. And I was surprised. I thought he was going to be completely opposed to the idea. As we actually saw some of the Mandalorians being against it themselves. We saw the all the chatter and not a lot of people speaking for it. But we see that Paz has probably put his aggression to the side and willing to help out. But I love when we get to see them all arriving to Navarro, taking out the pirates. The way they were working was great. The armor had a fantastic scene. I love seeing her. And we, I also love how both Bo and Din were able to work together. Um, Din being the distraction initially, taking a couple guys out, saying his line where he likes those odds, and Bo helping out afterwards as well. And they're able to then take down the ship, which is something that I was pleasantly surprised. You know, we see them taking them out, and the the uh, pirates also 
being taken down as well. And I thought that was great and all. But we have this scene here where after everyone is celebrating how Bo goes with the armor and she has she is asked to remove her helmet, which is something that she was quite surprised as she then is walking around with no helmet on in front of everybody else and how she is given the task by the armorer to try to unify all of Mandalore and getting Mandalore back. She she took what the words that Bo had actually said in the previous episode to heart and this is something that she feels could be the change that she could be the catalyst for Mandalore to once again be united. So now with this new mission, Bo will go out there and trying to find other Mandalorians. I think this is probably where we're going to see Fen, uh, Fen Rao, probably see Sabine's family, the Ren clan. Who knows? Or maybe the Night Owls that ran away from her. But who knows? And so the episode ends, though, in a weird way because we have Captain Tiva finding the ship that was uh, carrying Moff Gideon, finding that no one survived, and he finds a piece of Beskar alloy. So someone of maybe a Mandalorian or someone that has Beskar was able to take Moff Gideon. Now, this could be anyone. Who knows? Could it be a, another Mandalorian faction? Could it be Boba Fett? Who, at, who has no... We have no idea. We have no idea who's taken them. But we know that he has been taken out. He is alive, obviously. But no, we know how Star Wars is. If you have not found the body, then you are alive. Uh, unfortunately for <clears throat> other characters, we know their story. But definitely crazy stuff. A crazy way to end. And we'll probably see him off very soon. But thank you guys. Stay safe. And I'll catch you all later.